Are you seeking clarity about your love life, relationships, your career, or maybe even your life purpose? Maybe you're trying to figure out what's holding you back. Connect with me for spiritual mentoring, life coaching, and or a spiritual or energetic reading that can help you to find your way back to who you really are. Harness the spirit of your highest timeline version. If you haven't purchased your copy of the Manifesting Your Masterpiece book written by Tunisia Ali, you can get it on Amazon.com today. Beautiful butterflies in transformation with the head butterfly here. Tunisia Ali getting ready to go in with your daily healing inspiration here. Okay, we're going to start out with the Sacred Light Oracle and we're going to start out with this Law of Attraction, the money deck, and we're going to get you some guidance before we get into more detailed messages with the tarot. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the channel. I hope that you are feeling peaceful. I want you to feel productive. I already know that you're prosperous, but I want you to feel prosperous. I want you to feel powerful, living in your passion, and I want your point of attraction to be positive. I am here to help you to gain clarity so that you may manifest your highest version. Let's go ahead and let's dig into what the message is for today. All of you beautiful butterflies, we are starting out first with the Sacred Light Oracle. I want to thank all of you for returning. I want to thank you for your time. I want you to know that I appreciate your love and support. The support and love that you show by commenting, by putting those purple hearts down there for those of you who are traveling the fifth dimensional frequency and making all attempts to travel, to navigate the next highest timeline in your life and to protect yourself from the negativity and the fear that exists around you in the outer world for those people who are still stuck in the matrix. So... Thank you for your likes, your shares, your subscribes, and your commentary. Let's get this first message from the Sacred Light Oracle out. Okay, it has fallen. We have Light Seeker. We know that you are a Light Seeker, okay? Because we know that on the bottom we have uh, Psychic Debris with this Crystal Kingdom, okay? Slowing down materialism. Now, with the Crystal Kingdom here... <clears throat> And this uh, light seeker card, uh, many of you, when I think of light seeking and I think of the psychic debris here, many of you may be trying to create a new paradigm in your life, one where you are moving closer towards what feels good in your life, uh, what feels more light in your life, what brings you more happiness, peacefulness, and content. When you are a light seeker, you're not always just seeking knowledge. You're not always seeking the next highest expression of your learning curve, whatever that may be in terms of seeking spiritual truth. You are often someone who is seeking a better way, someone who is uh, a person who resonates with more high vibrational environments, more high vibrational people. So in seeking this light, you have a vision for your life. You have something that you want to create. You have something that when you think about it or you dream about it, it makes you feel good. It makes you feel inspired. You are open to learning and raising your consciousness because that's what light actually is. It's a, a form of consciousness. It's an increased level of awareness that you are allowing to come into your life. So <clears throat> for many of you that may be requiring uh, mental resilience and strength, fortitude and perseverance at this particular time to move through whatever it is that you need to move through that will allow you to release yourself from whatever psychic debris uh, you may be battling with or you may be around or you may be needing to let go and cleanse your energy of to move to more move towards a more high elevational 
sort of an environment in your life, whatever that is, it feels as though you are moving from one place into another place. Some of you have already uh, <clears throat> made it over to the other side and are now wanting to embed and entangle yourself with the new vibrational frequencies that are making you feel good, that are making you feel inspired, all right? So it doesn't matter where you are on that continuum because wherever you are, you're constantly having to do the energetic work, the energetic cleaning, the releasing of psychic debris, whatever it is that you're having to do to maintain the vibration. It's some sort of work even if it's only mindful intentions every day, it requires that you do something because like faith, our energy is never stagnant. It is either always constantly increasing or decreasing. Now, the message we have here is I can transform the world. This is a message of you understanding that you are the power. I've got the power. And you already know, superpower, superpower. The theme song, we got a few votes for the superpower theme song we had from last time, I think. And some of you are liking Shine. I wanted you to put in the comments, what is your new theme song for 2024? What is the song that when you listen to it, you feel fired up and you know that you are unbeatable, undefeatable? So with this, I can transform the world message. This is saying that you believe in yourself. This is a reminder that if you've lost hope in any way, not to give up, to continue to persevere. And the one way that you win first and you get on that trajectory of achievement, triumph, and, and, and getting closer towards the life that you want to create is that you have to believe that you can transform not only the world, but because it starts first with the inner world, but that you can transform your world. Make lists of positive aspects. Make a list. <laughs> Funny, I was talking to my sister the other day. She was talking about making a list. And, and remembering to tell yourself all the time, when you want to do something, make a list. Make a list. Make a list. This is an opportunity to make a list. Make lists of the things you love and never complain about anything. Why? Because the things that we focus on, the thoughts that we focus on become things. The things that we focus on help to create the static energy around us that becomes our default vibration. The more energy that we give towards those things, the more we become well insulated within that particular vibrational frequency. So if you are not thinking positive things and you are thinking negative things or you are complaining or you're allowing your thoughts to just run away from you and you realize you're having mindless thoughts throughout the day, that are controlling you versus the other way around, know that you are providing more of a gravitational force of inertia and creating more of the environment that likely you do not want. So you have to make a conscious effort to focus on the things that feel good. And believe you me, I have been at this for years. And there are times when I'm manifesting like this. And there are times where if I'm not vigilant about my spiritual practice, you can easily black backslide after two or three days and you begin to notice, wait a minute, I'm feeling different. My outer world is showing up differently. Wait a second, I got to get back on track. What is going on? Let me take a survey of the thoughts that I am having. Where is it that I dropped the ball? So that deliberate intention and that mindfulness focus that allows you to bring your attention to the good in your life, even if it means writing it down because that reinforces the message to your subconscious. It also says to you, this is a value. This is a priority. Writing things down can be very beneficial. And as you use those things, that shine bright and make you feel good as your excuse to give your attention and be the who you are. You will tune to who you are and the whole world will begin to transform between your eyes. I'm telling you, and you all have heard me say this a lot, you create your world from the inside out, not from the outside in. You don't create your world by responding to what's going on outside because maybe somebody's throwing rocks at your window and I'm speaking metaphorically. Maybe someone else is spreading gossip or coming to you with uh, propaganda or, or trying to make you afraid of different things. Maybe you cut on YouTube and you, you, you see that the majority of people are talking about things that are not giving you a sense of comfort. Those are the people that are throwing rocks at your house. And as long as you listen to those things and you absorb those things, those things transmute your reality. And if you do that too much, pretty soon you become the things that you listen to very easily. That pretty soon does not take long. You can easily become the things that you listen to. So this is saying the world will begin to transform 
right before your eyes because you begin to transform. You begin to only let in the good. You begin to only focus on the good. You begin to only draw your attention to the things that allow you to feel uplifted, that bring joy in your heart, that put a smile on your face. And that is the same way in which you'll approach the relationships with the people in your life. You'll bring more joy. You'll bring more high vibrational energy in. You'll bring more light in. So then we have... Um, it is not your job to transform the world for others, but it is your job to transform it for you. A state of appreciation is pure connection to source where there is no perception of lack. And I like that appreciation word has a nicer ring and vibe to it even than gratitude. When you think of appreciation, it's like, wow. When you think of gratitude, it's like, I got to be thankful for something. So if you're not big on the word gratitude and you prefer appreciation, then use the word appreciation. But remember, this is the transformation that is required for your life. You are not responsible for other people's life. And if you're in a relationship with someone and they're not putting in the energy, okay, then you have to ask yourself, is this a job for one person? Is it a job for two people? Two people? Can I do this on my own? If you're the problem in the relationship and you make some changes, you most certainly can. But if the other person is the problem, the only thing you can change is how you respond to a situation. And that can change the energy in the relationship. But it may not always be enough of a catalyst to change the other person that you're dealing with. So remember, it starts with self first. If you have someone that truly loves you and cares about you, then that person will most definitely respond in a positive way to the energy that you bring in a relationship. And that's how you're going to know. And that's what I mean when I say it takes one person to change the energy in a relationship. You're dealing with someone that really loves you, someone that cares about you, someone that, that is sensitive to your needs, someone that is in tune with your energy, someone who is able to intuit what is going on with you. And so as you shift your energy and you bring in more light, you're going to find that that person is also going to reflect back that light. If you're dealing with someone that is an energy vampire, that is sucking the life force energy out of you, that's sucking your blood, that's using you, that's humiliating you, that's not very mean, that's not very nice, that's very mean, that's not very thoughtful, that it could care less about how you are feeling about something, that is not a situation that you can do. Okay, let's go ahead and get some tarot guidance. We're going to pull three cards for our beautiful butterflies and transformation who are seeking the light, who want more joy out of life, who want a larger slice of life, who has made <clears throat> moving towards the light a quest, which means they're putting down those things that represent the old way of doing things, okay? So we have here, we have, oh, we have, all oh, reversals and the deck is not upside down so we have the death reverse we have the king of wands reverse the page of wands reverse and the seven of swords reverse so this is the message that i'm feeling some of you may have lost the vision for your life or you may not necessarily be fully on track with the direction that you heretofore were moving in and as such um, you're going to have to let go of whatever it is that you're holding on to for dear life that is keeping you etched in the past. An old past that is contrasting with or compromising your ability to move forward according to what it is that you really want for your life. <clears throat> for example, let's say there's something you need to let go of here with the death card. You're watering something that is no longer beneficial. It could be even, you could be watering a particular um, uh, intervention, something that you've been doing in your life that is no longer working anymore, okay? And you need more from it. Uh, maybe you've lost your zest here with the reversed page of Mount Wines and you're not feeling very excited. You're not feeling very motivated about something, but what a simple tweak can do for you to help move you in the right direction and to energize you and to motivate you may actually be profound in terms of getting back on track. Some of you with the seven of swords reversed here are not trusting yourselves. And as, re as a result, you have not been able to look out for yourself or to put your interests first the way you actually need to in order to protect what is yours and in order to put uh, other people in the driver's seat of the things that they actually need to own. So this is saying that you need to get back on track with looking out for your interests. You need to get back on track with looking out for the things that 
you may have put too much of an investment in that maybe you can no longer trust. You need to begin to put the focus on yourself and what your particular needs are and what is needed in terms of energy and direction to change your situation around so that you can get back into the driver's seat. So with the page of wands reverse and the king of wands reverse, a lot of you have lost your motivation. You may have lowered your standards. You may have forgotten the wisdom of previous lessons that you learned. You may just not be feeling very excited about a particular direction. And I can promise you it's because you have forgotten about yourself here. You have forgotten about yourself. It's time for a new adventure. It's time for um, <clears throat> to take advantage of a new way of doing things, to go in a new direction, to allow yourself to feel inspired, to get back in the driver's seat, and to definitely welcome the transformation that you are being called to, the change that you are being called to, the metamorphosis, the shape-shifting. Whatever it is that you are being called to step into that requires that you fully let something go from the past or that you totally transmute a situation, which means pull up the foundation and create a new foundation and get excited about that and set some goals about that. If, if it is a relationship, for some of you, the transformation may mean it's time to let something go. It's time for a new beginning. For others of you, you're creating a new beginning for yourself that will then impact the relationship in due time. So you may be needing to focus that energy on yourself and to take the focus potentially off of a relationship for some of you. I love this message. Let me go in one more card with a spiritual awakening oracle, and then we're going to close out this message. So it is definitely, or you, it is definitely time, but you are definitely being reminded that something is amiss in your world and that you need to bring in more excitement. And for some of you, the way that y'all have been doing something, like the Seven of Swords Reverse, I mean, you could be hiding. And the way you've been doing something is not enough to energize what it is that you are trying to have happened in your life, which means you got to depart from the past and you got to have a whole new strategy in order to get the things that you want. You've got to get reconnected. You've got to get re-excited about something. You've got to become passionately motivated about something again. You've got to set some standards for yourself and you've got to take action. The message here that I'm seeing more than anything else is the message of taking action, deciding the, the direction that you're going to go in and being ready for what a new beginning requires. A new beginning requires that we give up our association with the old self and that we begin to embed ourselves in the dream and in the fantasy of the new reality and we think about the new reality we leave the old reality behind we stop bringing back the same narratives we stop checking in with the same dead stories we stop following up with the people who we no longer are responsible for or connected to and we begin to focus on the new direction we begin to follow the light we let go as this car over here said that we had out here initially, that psychic debris, okay? I'm going to say the law of mentalism, okay? We have multiple cards under this, but this is the top card, the law of mentalism. And the law of mentalism is really, you know, the all is mine and the universe is mental, baby. Everything starts with a thought. You can't move anything in this universe uh, or, or start any process without the mental aspect, Okay, so I think of the Kabbalion when I look at this. Get clarity on your core values and commit to what matters. Get clarity on your core values and commit to what matters. I'm going to see if there's anything else in this message <clears throat> that you might benefit from. But I love that law of mentalism because it helps us to remember that we create worlds with our thoughts and our thoughts move energy. Okay, the law of mentalism says, it's uh, 55, but it's card 28. And what we have here is a message that says, everything begins in mind. The universe is a mental universe. Yes, the all is mind. The universe is mental. The Kabbalion, the three initiates. There is one mind that interconnects everyone and everything. We're talking about super consciousness here. We're talking about the super mind. 
Okay, the first cause of all creation is born in this divine mind and within, so without, as within, so without. Each person has been endowed with the individual use of this one mind. You are tapped into it. You are hooked into it like a plug hooked into a system that allows an electrical grid to benefit you by bringing power into your home, okay? <clears throat> The individual experiences the condensed use via limiting beliefs and perceptions. The truth is that you have the infinite intelligence of the entire universe within. Like you have access to it. You have it. By drawing this card, your higher self desires for you to end judgment of others and yourself. The entire judgment or the entire universe is connected through an omnipotent presence. The moment you perceive yourself separate and experience feeling divided and powerless... At the energetic core, you unite with everyone and everything through the one mind, which means we are all connected. You are being asked to live in the mental state of gratitude. This is the second time we've gotten that message of gratitude and appreciation as a wonderful way of shifting your energy and shifting your world. A creative medium surrounds you, reflecting and receiving the direct impression of your thoughts and acts according to it. If you desire to experience your divinity, you must live in For gratitude. For the best in natural hair and skin care products, go to the IamMelaninMagic.com website also experience our various flavors of traditional Somali unzi, romanticize, feminize, and up-level not only yourself, but your environment. Do you have dark spots from skin irritation? How about unsightly marks from acne that's lasted way too long? Fade Magic can help you find your way back to radiance over time. Don't delay, order yours today.